Hey, Postables, you're listening to Deliver Me a Podcast, brought to you by Casey, Jess, and Cammie. A special thanks to James Jandrish for letting us use music on our show. Now, grab some yoo sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hello, Postables! We are back to recap our, well, it's my top favorite, <laughs> one of my top favorites, not the top favorite. We'll get to that a little bit, but it's definitely one it's of one, my favorite movies ever. It, it's one of our one, two, three, four. <laughs> <laughs> but it's this, up there. It's, it's up top there. five. Top five. Top five. Top five. Consistent top five for me. Mm-hmm. And that movie, if you haven't already guessed, is Lost Without You. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so Cammy, Jess, and I, we have promised ourselves that we are going to save Shalover for very last. Otherwise, we might not get through this. Ep- I might not get through this episode. I'm already a little, like, you know, flushed over here. Yeah. But to start us off, I'm going to just recap this movie for any of you who uh, needs a little reminder, which I'm sure all of you know, but it's okay. More science what, to what talk about. What, what if they're new postables? They may need a refresher. Oh, well, that's true. Yeah. You know yes. what? Here you go for you new postables. Oliver's divine delivery theory is put to the test when he and the postables seem to be unable to deliver a damaged letter from a military veteran that's a matter of life or life and death. They've no. always been able to deliver mail by the grace of God right at the time it's most needed. While Oliver's faith is not shaken, his father, Joe, questions this divine theory. As Norman and Rita go on a road trip to pursue leads in the urgent veterans letter, their trip takes them to the next level of the relationship and leads them to the place they're needed the most. Meanwhile, Oliver and Joe go backpacking on a father-son bonding trip during which a serious injury puts both their lives at risk. After Oliver doesn't show up at work, Shane spearheads a rescue mission and calls Oliver's police officer friend, Dale, to help. When all seems lost, what's most important is found. To everything, there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. Lost without you, my friends. There you go. Lost without you. There it is. All righty. So let's kick this off and let's just talk about one interesting character that we've heard of a lot. Her name is Eleanor. I want to sh- Eleanor. In passports. In passports. Mm-hmm. With the blender. Yes. yes. So Eleanor has passed away and I just want to shout out some trivia from our good oh. friend Shandell. Oh, I, I bet I bet I know what trivia you're doing. Let me see if I'm right. Okay. Don't say it. Say it oh, say you it. want me to say it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So there's two facts about Eleanor. First of all, the photo that we see at the funeral is, Cammy. would you like to uh, share? Martha's mommy. It is. (laughs) It is Martha Williamson's mom, which I was actually, uh, okay, when I saw that, I didn't know that. And I was like, oh, I, is this lady actually somebody who's gone on? Yeah, that's what I thought. I said, oh, who is that? Yeah. 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 (laughs) Yeah. So fun fact. Thank you, Shandell, for sharing that. And she also shares a second trivia fact that Eleanor was not supposed to be older. Oh, she was uh, she actually is credited in the pilot movie and she's supposed to be a young lady um played by a woman named lark miller and if you go to her blog post called credit extras things you didn't know you can read up on that all right so that was a fun fact about lark miller but let's go into the meat and potatoes of this the letter story we meet topper who is a military veteran. He has obvious PTSD. Um, He has this letter that he has his nephew send out, um, which it gets lost and the postables find it. And it It is a letter to- It gets destroyed. I don't know how- I don't know how it made it as far as it did. Oh my gosh. I remember I, I even wrote this down. It's like you get peanut butter and jelly all over it. A car runs over it and it gets ripped up in your bike chain. Like, what? <laughs> what the heck? 
kid. All he had to do was take it and put it in a post office box. I mean, come on. And the other thing, too, it's not like he went very far. Yeah. I mean, how, how, how did he get peanut butter and jelly all over the... He was eating the sandwich, he grabbed it, and then it flew out of his hand. Wait, over. are you squeezing the or are you smashing the bread onto the envelope or what? You know, I mean, come on. Oh man. That's he, not that's not a draw for a smudge or two. You can see through something like mm-hmm. that. You know? <laughs> Bless his heart. Oh gosh. <laughs> But the letter is to Sandy, and it's a bucket list of sorts that the post will discover. Um, did you expect Sandy to be who she turned out to be? No. Nope. Not no in idea. the slightest. Not in the slightest. Martha's good at tricking us. <laughs> yes, indeed. She really, she really is. <laughs> She really is. And she had me baffled as to what, how, like, how the, the storylines were going to intersect with the postable storyline and the letter mm-hmm. story because it was kind of odd, especially with you when we have Norman and Rita trekking through New Mexico eating all the hot chili peppers. Yeah. And stuff. <laughs> oh my gosh. But I was kind of like, where is this going? <laughs> can, I, can I say honestly that at first I was a little mad? I, I will be completely honest and say the first time I saw this movie, I thought, oh my gosh, it's what? Yeah, I, I, I was very disappointed. And then I kept watching and I said, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so Jess, did you pick up on as soon as you found out it was a dog? Did you oh, figure we're out? It now. Okay. Oh, yeah, I mean, you know. I don't, I don't really remember what I thought. I didn't, I didn't pick up, I didn't pick up what was going to happen mm-hmm. until Rita and Norman arrived. Yeah, I guess oh, I, yeah, I didn't okay. put the, the tracking I put together. It to, no, I didn't mm-hmm. get but that. But when they it. started, when they started talking about search teams, I'm like, ah, uh, car, dog, get her out, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, up until that point, uh-uh. Yeah. Yeah, no, for me, because it was military, and I remember in the beginning, they had the, we see the the bombing of the U.S. Embassy, Mm -hmm. right? Um, And then I realized, oh, rescue dog, oh, they're attached, um, Topper and Sandy. Um, When when it was a dog, when we figured out it was a dog, I was like, oh, okay, I see where this is going, because Mm -hmm. they were lost at that point. It was a little baffling to me, because... Sandy seemed so fine. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, that, that part really confused me that the whole point of this was to get to Sandy mm-hmm. before she dies. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, and they talk about we almost lost her, but she was as perky as a puppy. You know, I, I mean, it's, she yeah. she did not seem to have anything wrong and no you can't make a dog act like you can a person mm-hmm. but it just that that part was a little harder for me to follow mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. i was like okay they almost lost her yeah but nothing's changed right. yeah. cuz it's not like her- the letter had been lost forever you know right. no and it had time to change Nothing's changed in her circumstances. You know, maybe mm-hmm. if she perked up a little bit once she had the shirt mm-hmm. or something like that, it would have made a little bit more sense. But I I was, I got a little lost and that's probably why I was a little distanced from the storyline and from the emotional attachment of the storyline because I, I wasn't following it very well. She doesn't look sick to me. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Sandy was depressed that the dog was not depressed. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Since we're already talking about Sandy and the discovery of Sandy, let's talk about Norman and Rita. So 
dear sweet Norman and dear sweet Rita, I don't know if I'm going to get through this part. <laughs> How would you say we've seen their relationship grow? Because this, this, uh, this movie for them, it's so subtle in a way, but it's also so dynamic, you know, like yeah, yeah. we see this, I don't want to say it's a slow burn necessarily, but we've gone through 10 episodes a Christmas movie, and this mm-hmm. is movie number, what, five or six or something like that? But it's the middle of the movie canon. Yeah. We've seen their relationship go from two people who can barely look at each other <laughs> to uh, friends, to legitimate friends. We've yeah. seen them grow from friends to boyfriend, girlfriend. We've seen the boyfriend, girlfriend thing go into the, like, awkward high school mode <laughs> like <laughs> to an actual relationship <laughs> so in this movie how would you how would you describe them because we all know what happens in the next movie we won't spoil it for anybody who hasn't seen it but comfortable. yeah i mean yeah this is a comfortable like in sync they're they're in tune with one another and they're mm-hmm. they're not like like you said they're more comfortable with each other and Norman's more encouraged to to be bold and do do bigger things and not be so inside his little shell. Mm-hmm. So there's there's no need for either one of them to explain anything. Mm-hmm. They they talk about things. And they're discussing things, and Norman is thinking about taking a job in D.C., but what does Rita say? If you leave, I'm yeah. coming with you. And mm-hmm. she's very sure and very confident of that. There's and no, there's no question. There's no question. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think that they've reached a real level of commitment mm-hmm. where they don't have to constantly make each other feel better, mm-hmm. where they don't have to constantly assure each other. I mean, this might sound silly, but I, I look for little things as well as grand gestures and romance. Mm-hmm. And the fact that Norman was pouring hot water on her feet in the DLO after she had oh. walked so far, mm-hmm. I thought that was the sweetest thing. And then she says, oh, I'm never going to walk again. And he says, oh, yes, you will. Just not in those <laughs> shoes. Yeah, it's just, yeah. I mean, he knows her. He mm-hmm. knows her that well. They are that comfortable with each other mm-hmm. that, you know, they're, they're just talking about shoes. And, mm-hmm. they're, and he's pouring hot water on her feet as if it's a daily ritual, you know, but it's something kind that he's doing for her and mm-hmm. showing that he loves her. So, yeah, yeah it's not, it, there's no need for reassurance. Right. You know, yes. there's, there's a need to talk things out. And the one time when Rita gets a little uncomfortable and, you know, they're at the motel and they're at the opposite ends of mm-hmm. the motel. And Norman, you don't mind that we're not, oh, Rita, there's a time and a place to be bold. You know, I mean, just <laughs> immediately. Not <in> Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, immediately mm-hmm. that's done. That's over. There's no more need to hash it out. Yeah. So, yeah. And you know how you can tell that they're really comfortable with each other for better, or for worse. I mean, Norman was in his boxers, man. And puking. S- sweating. And-, and he was probably not just puking. It was probably yeah. coming out of both ends. Yeah. 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 <sighs> and he was right there and was not squeamish. <laughs> well, no. she wasn't in the bathroom with him, but she oh, that was in a small room. motel room. <laughs> yeah, that is. A small hotel thin room. walls, Cammy. I don't know. No, hey, I know. I know. Oh my gosh, I loved the garters. I love the garters holding up his socks. That was so funny. Did you guys not see that? I don't think I know. <laughs> yes, no, yes, no, he had. I mean, I don't know what you would call them. I, I don't think that you call them garters for men. But yeah, he had he had those things on his legs to yeah. keep up his socks. It was the 
funny as playing to me. It was so funny. You're going to have to go back and watch that. Now. I'll have to go back and look and see. Because <laughs> yeah. it's not a trivia question. What color? <laughs> well, were obviously artists? not. <laughs> <laughs> they were black, by the way. <laughs> oh, good to note. Good. Yeah. Maybe so. you're really looking. <laughs> I'm a married woman, thank you. <laughs> this next segment, let's talk about Oliver and Joe O'Toole. So uh, Joe has asked Oliver to go camping with him, and Oliver proudly says that he has a date with Shane. <laughs> yes, he does. Yes, uh, he does. And Joe is very encouraging and basically says, You get it. Let's go. Yeah. I love what he said. He's like, Oh, another time. Yeah. You know, I mean, it didn't even phase him. Yeah. He didn't blink. He did not blink. He went, My son has a date. My son has a date. Go now. <laughs> <laughs> very encouraging of this relationship. Very, very encouraging of this He's relationship. He's shipping Shaliver. He he knows mm -hmm. he knows how good this woman is for his son. Oh yeah. Oh I mean, yeah. The moment that Joe saw Shane, it was like <laughs> match made I, in heaven with my son. I want you for him. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So this camping trip that Shane actually encourages Oliver to go on. I I found it fascinating that she had her dad's stuff. She had her dad's camping gear there, mm -hmm. there with her at her apartment. The only thing that I can think of is when her dad left, he left it behind. Mm -hmm. That's kind of And was... when she went to Colorado, she figured she was going to Colorado with the mountains. Mm -hmm. So she would, might need that stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's my only, that's my only guess is that she thought she would need the gear mm -hmm. because she was moving to Colorado and she might want to do some hiking or some camping. Yeah. Makes total sense to me. Shane's a fit girl. So. Yeah, she really is running all those miles to go spy on a gentleman at his window. <laughs> she can handle the uh, higher altitude. <laughs> <laughs> So after Shane encourages Oliver to go camping with his dad, Oliver, bless his heart, who's probably never spent a day outside like that, <laughs> meets his dad and they go up to the mountains. Um, I just personally, I love the relationship that we've seen in Joe and Oliver. Yeah. There, there's just something very special about like the prodigal son returning, you know? Yeah. My mom, uh, when she would watch these with me, she, she saw them back when I saw them, but mm -hmm. she doesn't rewatch things like I do. <laughs> and so this, so when they started showing them on Thursday nights, she set time aside to watch them mm -hmm. with me. And it was kind of like our postables night. And she said, how on earth did that man raise a son like that? I said, <laughs> well, he left home at 18. You know? yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> or at 17 or something like that. So, <laughs> so maybe that has something to do with it. You know? So I always thought that he just really respected his grandfather. And I, I would assume his grandfather would be as old fashioned as oliver is or at least a lot well, more old-fashioned than joe yeah <laughs> I think too though because oliver is so like traumatized by people leaving him he got like the old-fashionedness and the rules became a protection for him because mm. it's ah yes you know what i mean it's almost like his his security blanket in a way. yeah definitely it's not the right word but no it no that mm -hmm. that works yeah. it was just it was just funny that my mom would say how did that man <laughs> raise a son like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, i love norman's comment too oliver doesn't like to live outside <laughs> no. at least not on at least not on purpose <laughs> <laughs> that did make me giggle i love oh that oh my gosh oh my gosh so joe tool trips and he has a nasty cut and puncture wound a puncture like. wound <laughs> 
did you guys see the like the sepsis coming mm-hmm. at all? My mom's a nurse, so I totally suck. I, I mean, mean my, like, that's not good. <laughs> my parents are nurses too, but I was kind of like, I mean, a cut's a cut. <laughs> I, and I think it's because I think it's also because it didn't seem that bad. Like it seemed like just a sliver. Like, eh, right. It wasn't like gushing, <laughs> right? <laughs> Spewing. I didn't necessarily see sepsis happening, but I did see something serious happening because Mm. in a movie like this, or really in anything that shows an injury, you know it's going to be- The reason for it. The reason, or Mm -hmm. it's going to turn into something more serious. I'm reminded of a Little House on the Prairie episode, actually, where Caroline gets- um, Caroline gets a a little, a small cut from Mm -hmm. a nail sticking out of the wagon. She just scrapes her leg. That's it. She just, Mm -hmm. she just scrapes her leg on the nail and she looks down at it. Oh, darn it. You know, that's all. And Mm -hmm. oh, I'll have to take off my stockings and repair them and blah, blah, blah. And by the end of the episode, she has a horrible infection and she has to cut it out with Mm. the knife in order Mm -hmm. to save her life. Yeah. And so that, you know, there is, there would be no reason for Joe to get Mm -hmm. an injury of any kind, unless it was going to turn into something more serious. So I didn't necessarily see sepsis coming because I don't have parents in the medical field. I don't have any, I don't have any family in the medical field. So I don't know a whole lot of medical terms and I don't know signs and all of that, but I knew it was going to turn into something serious if it mm-hmm. was there. Yeah. yeah. We were kind of tipped off too, because afterwards, like the camera shot right back to that little spot on the log, like almost yeah. like a eerie uh, moment. You're uh, like, uh, something, something's going something's on Something's yeah. wrong. Something's fishy. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Well, Oliver and Joe try to get back to the parking lot, but they can't get back. They basically make a giant circle, and then they have to spend yet another <laughs> night in the woods. Um, first of all, how cold was that? Like, it looked super frigid. And if you see the behind-the-scenes pictures, you see all of them in gigantic, like, coats. Jackets. Yeah, like... Coats. I remember distinctly when Shane went to go to uh, Joe's house, you could see her breath. Mm-hmm. Like it was that cold. Yeah. So yeah, it was not, it was not warm. <laughs> yeah. So yes. Anything else about this scene before we dive in? Well, I just, I want to say something about their relationship really fast. Joan. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah. The scene where Joe confesses, that Oliver has been to the woods before because that's, because that's going to come up a little bit later Mm -hmm. and just how that one moment, I think kind of solidified Oliver's personality and his fear of the outside world Mm -hmm. because he didn't want to go back to the woods and he had been begging his parents to take him before. Mm Mm-hmm. And so his father bought him a record of the Rocky Mountain Birds. Mm-hmm. And, and that's a nice tie-in too. Like a continuity thing with the edge of forever. When he notices the bird, he knows what bird it is. Mm-hmm. It kind of like all ties back into mm-hmm. the bird theme. So like, yeah. yeah, that's a nice tie-in. And then when, when Joe is delirious, that is a point where I almost started crying. Mm. It, because he's just babbling. Yeah. And he and he's lost in time and it's okay ollie your mom and i argue sometimes and he's shivering Mm -hmm. and he has no comprehension of what is going on and and that is the moment that he is reliving Mm -hmm. when he has to explain to his son that he and his mom argue sometimes but you go have fun Mm -hmm. you know it's just oh and then and then, you know, he wakes up and, Ollie, Ollie, I'm, I'm right here, Dad. I'm right here. I love you, Ollie. Yeah, I'm just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just, I mean, as 
as movie watchers, we know that everything's going to be okay. Yeah. Because it, it wouldn't be a movie if it wasn't. But this is one of those moments when you are caught up in the in the suspense of it all yeah you know and you're just caught up in in that moment the emotion. Yeah. yes yeah. especially knowing how terrible oliver was to his dad right. prior to all of this i mean he shunned his dad for 13 years returned 15, all the, 15 years 15 yeah. all the letters returned all the letters and had threw didn't... them away at that one at that yeah. one point yep yep I mean, he wanted nothing to do with his dad, knowing that his mom left him, knowing that his dad wasn't even his biological father. I mean, like, the two of them have gone through so much. And to see them at this point where they can take a father-son bonding trip in order to kind of make up for lost time, if you will, in a sense, and then his father's almost dying here. I, I mean, it makes you kind of stop to think about these circumstances of these these times especially with what little time we have with you know parents specifically that was one thing that i realized too is like you know we shouldn't we can't waste time with like loved ones parents siblings and argue over stupid silly things all the time yeah um but that was my big takeaway from the oliver joe relationship in this movie there there's also uh, shout out to James Jandrish. The fact that the fact that the hallelujahs are the background music mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. A lot of people may look at that as a strange choice, but I saw it as so appropriate because the mood was so reverent. Yes. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know, there's a sacredness to it. There mm-hmm. was. I mean, you're in the mountains where a lot of people believe is the closest you can get to God's presence. Mm -hmm. You have that father-son relationship that is mending, Mm -hmm. which is very sacred, especially Mm -hmm. when it's been torn apart. You have the worry for others and the concern for others' safety. And Rita and Norman rushing to to get there as fast as they can and it's just there there was such a sacred there was such a sacred feel that to put in sacred music right there right was so it was it wouldn't be it wouldn't be my first choice but it was so beautiful Mm -hmm. It, it oh gosh yeah yeah and speaking of sacredness too, we see now Shane has, she calls for help because Oliver has not returned yet. She and Dale go up to the mountains and um, she tells Rita and Norman, like Oliver and his dad, they're lost. And Rita says, well, please pray. And she's like, I don't know how. I don't know how. Mm-hmm. But then you see that she goes into a, a private area and she finds a way to pray and she does her best she does her best and it's a pivotal point for her too because you know we go back to the pilot she is not she does not believe in much less anything obviously because she doesn't believe in the divine letter theory as whereas oliver is like you know there's a reason for everything these Mm -hmm. are it's a divine delivery. He doesn't say those exact words, but there's so much faith and he's just picking random letters out. And he's like, it'll get to him, you know, trust the timing, blah, blah, blah. And Shane's all like, what is this? But yeah. through this journey of just watching these letters being delivered at just the right time and seeing Oliver in his faith throughout multiple times. I mean, there was the time when Rita was at the pageant and she couldn't remember the, the, the mules, <laughs> and she's like do that thing you do and he's like i already am and we see him praying and giving that beautiful speech at edge of forever he, he does the eulogy for eleanor's um funeral i mean she has he the never, treasure box the treasure box too and, praying praying for a way to get out yeah and he never preaches at her and he never tells her what to do he just always he just does it because that's just a part of who he is right and that mm-hmm. influence just you know, it, it took for Oliver to be lost in the woods 
for her to, you know, come to that point. But it's a beautiful moment just with everything going on. And it's such a pivotal switch for Shane and her growth too. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely a turning point because this is like you said, like treasure box where she asked Oliver to pray or in the, with the, um, the mules or whatever. She's always turned to Oliver as her mm-hmm. rock, but this is the first time where she's, she's she kind can't. of forced to seek God yeah. like, directly. Her rock is of, gone. <laughs> like God is now her rock and not, not Oliver. So mm-hmm. yeah. it really kind of forces her to, to kind of, t- to own that, that relationship mm-hmm. because she's used, you know, this movie, she, she looks at Dale and Oliver and you can tell she's having doubts, like they're more suited for each other. They have that faith component mm-hmm. and she's open to it. But we kind of really see her begin that conversion here, mm-hmm. which is really beautiful. Yeah. All right. So speaking of Dale. Dale. <laughs> Travers. Dale, Dale, Dale. Okay. Well, first of all, have you guys noticed that Dale and Shane have neutral gender names. Yes, I have noticed that. I did not. I did not. That did not cross my mind that both of them do. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I mean, I I noticed that <laughs> Dale, I know that I noticed that Dale was a very male name, you know, and so I I thought that maybe they were giving giving her a more male name because she's in a man's world she's a detective and you know quote unquote man's world thing yeah but uh oh my gosh i'm ashamed to say that no i didn't notice (laughs) you've blown cammy's mind (laughs) and then also the other thing that i noticed is that oliver he kind of has a weird type ish in a way so shane and holly they don't necessarily look like each other but they seem to have some kind of resemblances i i don't know what it is maybe it's their maybe it's they're their both, long... they're both assertive they're both assertive that's it, what i'll say i mean i, I don't the know long hair no, I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry. if you if you look at a side, if you look at a, there's a picture of the two of them, and it's just like I don't I don't know if it's maybe it's just the picture, but there's just something about the two of them that I'm kind of like, oh, okay, I mean, personality wise and everything, they're completely different, but like look wise, it's just I don't know, there's just something there. But then also, Holly and Dale are both redheaded. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then Shane's like the bright blonde you the know <laughs> it's 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 very interesting to me his his type of women and then then they're also really different personality wise too yeah you have- i was to say it's it's more interesting that he chose holly over dale because he already was friends with uh, if i was oliver i uh, chose dale in the heartbeat but whatever that's another story <laughs> yeah like she shows so much character in this movie like she's a stand-up woman like she comforts shane she does even though she in an ideal world would want to be with Oliver. Right. She's there for Shane. Like, like, whoa, woman. It is, it is hard to say who would get the MVP award for this movie, but a lot of me wants to say it's Dale. Yeah. Dale's great. We need her to have like a resolution story. Like we need to know, like she ends up with somebody great. Not Lester. Yeah. Not Lester. Not Lester. <laughs> but we love you, Lane. We love you, Lane. We don't like Lester. <laughs> <laughs> so Maybe she would encourage Lester to grow. <laughs> grow, grow to grow up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Doubtful. Okay. So question. Because Dale is she's a mixed review among fans. People either love her, people either hate her, or people just don't care. Um how can you not love her? I, I, she see sings. That- she arrests people. She's the mistress of the robes. I mean, come on. Her life is not nearly as exciting as it sounds. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, she doesn't sing when she's packing. So, or... <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> but is Dale a threat? If you didn't know anything else, is Dale a threat? If you didn't know anything else, of course. Beautiful woman, accomplished amazing character wise Mm -hmm. yeah she's completely a threat and shares the faith that oliver you know holds in such esteem that's very important to him see i don't see her as a threat (laughs) 
because she wow. and all, she, I, I, I don't. She and Oliver are just, they have this sibling vibe going on. Up, well, you all, said, you said if you didn't know anything yeah, else. Like, no, I'm talking about if I didn't know anything else, higher ground and forward. I mean, yeah, objectively, I, I think she's a threat. But when you see them together, you, I would agree, you get more of a, we're good friends, a brother, sister kind of. But with an exception of a few moments, I think there's a little chemistry between them. A few moments where you see there could be in the hospital. In the hospital, there at the end, that was no brother sister. No, that was definitely. But it's always one sided, though. That's what I've noticed. Oh yeah, and you know the fact that he asked, "Where is Shane?" Yeah, you saw that look in her eyes Mm -hmm. that was resolved. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe she wanted to see because of this whole scary thing because he, she held it in much better because she's a professional and she's a cop mm-hmm. and she's right. not gonna she's not gonna show emotions but yeah. but i think in my opinion this situation maybe brought forward some things that she felt for oliver that she mm-hmm. had tampered down <laughs> yes yeah and, they had kind of already had that conversation in one mm-hmm. in a million where you're like it's not happening you yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, but she, but she sees him. She puts her hands to his face yes. there in the, in the hospital. And she was talking to him. She was being the tiniest bit flirty. And then he says, mm-hmm. where is Shane? And, and then her face saw, falls. Mm-hmm. You saw her r- fall a little bit. He doesn't want me. And then resolve. But I think she already knew that. He, but there was- he, she did, but it was like a one last hope thing. Yeah. Right. And, and then she was completely resolved. Yes. Yes. Because she had always been very guarded. And like I said, like, there were a few moments where it was definitely more one-sided on her part. But when she sees Oliver in the hallway, like, her guard has completely fallen at yeah. that moment. Completely. Um, but yeah, I mean, I never really, I honestly never really saw Dale as a threat just because they seem too much, they're, one, they're too alike <laughs> in a lot of different ways. And sometimes that's not a good thing. I mean, yes, be alike in religion and politics, but like, you know, if he likes blue and you like pink, well, whatever, you know, if he <laughs> likes pizza and you hate pizza, that's fine too. Um, but I, 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 I personally, I like Dale for all the reasons y'all said. I really hope she gets a resolve, like you guys said. Yeah. And I appreciate- She needs to find somebody. Yes. And I appreciated the fact that she didn't, her claws didn't come out. Oh, yeah. No, she's not catty they it could anyway. have. They mm-hmm. could have. They could have come out big time with all that alone time that she and Shane had. Mm-hmm. Oh, she could have been so manipulative. She could, she, she could have been so passive aggressive. Yeah. She yeah. didn't and do she was very a diplomatic. single bit. She very. Was, and if anything, I think she was, she really was looking out for Shane because even the way she phrased, like when, you know, Shane was basically asking how worried should I be? You know, she didn't like try to freak her out. She just, she kind of chose her words carefully. And, mm-hmm you know, that it's, it's concerning, you know, that when they don't come back kind of yeah. thing. Well, and when Shane said, well, we see that I can't handle it. Shane could have easily said, no big mm-hmm. deal. You know, we all lose it sometimes. And she doesn't. Yeah. She said, no, you followed your instincts. You made the call and you waited until it felt safe mm-hmm. to break down. And Shane says, am I safe? Mm-hmm. And that's a loaded gun right there. That is a loaded question. Yeah. And and, sh- and Dale says, Oliver is my friend. And that is mm-hmm. that is Dale telling Shane, I am not gonna get in the way. I am right. not going I'm to, stepping back. Yeah. I'm stepping yeah. back. Yeah. She just had to do it for herself in mm-hmm. Oliver's eyes, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I also wonder why they never got together. Seriously. I mean, <laughs> I mean, the the one line that we get is the timing was never right, which I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Baloney. It's been 16 <laughs> years. You know? <laughs> okay. So we, we've done the, we've done the math. So at this point, Holly and Oliver probably would have been married. What? Three years ish. Let's, let's be liberal. Okay. Three so, years. Yeah. Let's they probably knew each years. other three minutes, so they probably, <laughs> probably three and a half years. 
Dale and Oliver knew each other for 16 years, minus three and a half. That is 13 and a half years for you to keep missing the timing. Oliver's a slow mover. <laughs> Yeah, we know that, but still. <laughs> I mean, we and we also find out that he has a guard up when it comes to women too. Mm-hmm. But, but, <laughs> but Dale yeah. scared him too much because she was always packing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's it just it's those are some things that make you go hmm. Well, and he had an inclination towards her too. He had a crush I mean, on her, a bit he of a crush. Had, yeah, he had a bit of a crush. You yeah, know, I mean, maybe maybe it was the guilt because he felt so guilty that he was going to see her and the mailbox blew up and he just couldn't do it that's true that that's a good point that he pulled away from her romantically because he he associated he associated it with that and Mm -hmm. it's possible definitely Yeah. yeah and i mean he is the type of person to be motivated by rules and regulations and the law like he's just a firm believer in black and white and so i can totally see him being like i did not follow my rules that i have set for myself therefore because i didn't follow my rules i cannot pursue this woman i have a bit of a crush on put himself in a relationship Uh, are you getting a little irish are you getting a little irish there sir casey (laughs) at all (laughs) um but anyways yeah just First of all, let us know what you think about Dale. Are you team Dale? Are you team anti Dale? And we didn't even talk about the killer scene where where um where Shane asked about prayer. That like is one of oh. the best lines in the entire movie. Now, we need to make a disclaimer here that we're not team Dale for her to be with Oliver. Oh no 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 no. no. We we need to we make that very clear. We just love Dale as a person because she is amazing Mm -hmm. and she puts up with a lot. (laughs) Yes. Yes. And there's no guile. There is no guile. The one time I have seen her unpleasant is when she's dealing with Lester. (laughs) That's the only time when she has been unpleasant. She even, she wasn't even unpleasant with Curly. You know, I mean, so well, she was probably like, He's a senile man, it's fine, yeah, yeah. But you know, she could have handled him a little bit more hostile, Mm -hmm. hostily, yeah, and she didn't. Yeah, yeah. The one time that I have seen her, the one time that I have seen her unpleasant at all Mm -hmm. is when she's dealing with a very unpleasant man. (laughs) (laughs) I still wanted her to say, You know, I have a gun, right. I'm packing. I'm packing. packing. <laughs> All righty. Anything else about Dale before we move on? Well, let's let's talk about that killer line. Let's talk yeah. about it. Let's yeah. go. Because, you know, Shane is having her turning point moment. And she asks, well, if, if God has everything figured out, what's the, what's the point of praying for anything? Which is a really, objectively, is a really good question. You know, it is a if, good question. If you have this idea that, well, God's already got the plan, so what is me, you know, asking for anything going to do to change it? And then Dale has the great response of, well, I guess I don't pray to change God, I pray to change me. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, mind blown. Like, I remember when I first watched that, my mind was literally blown. I'm just sitting there probably with my mouth hanging open, like, whoa, like, that's deep. That's two lines. why have we never thought of that? (laughs) It's just two lines. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, so, uh, Psalm 37.4 says, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. And a lot of people mistake that for, oh, if I, if I am good for God, he's going to give me what I want. It's actually mm-hmm. not saying that. It's saying exactly what Dale says, is that when we delight ourselves in the Lord, we become more like him. Therefore, what we want is what he wants. Right. Our wills are aligned with him. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes. So really, it's us changing and not us you know, using God as a genie, you know what I'm saying? So because that is, that is the one thing that we have complete power over. Mm -hmm. We have our will and we have our agency and our choices. And because everything else is somehow tied to blessings that we are, that we have been granted. 
you know, the, the clothes on our back, the food we eat, the jobs we have, you know, but the one thing that we have complete control over is our will and the choices that we make. Mm -hmm. And so when we hand that back over to God by saying, thy will be done, that is the greatest show of faith that we can do because mm -hmm. it's the one thing that we have control over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's a, an extremely profound line. Yes. That we pray Deep to stuff. change that we pray to change ourselves because that's what we are trying to do. We are mm -hmm. trying to change mm -hmm. ourselves to be more like God, to mm -hmm. see our to see things the way He does. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. Yeah. Whew. Ooh, enough from oh, the Martha. En enough from the pulpit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Martha is right. Yes. Okay. Are you ready? Are you guys ready? I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> Jess is like, I'm going to sit back now, grab my mop, and see these two girls yeah. cry. <laughs> before, before, before we go into Shalliver, can we just talk about the mole sauce? <laughs> Oh, we, talk, yeah. we talked about the about the motel room by itself, but can we just talk about the mole sauces? Sure. <laughs> Watching poor Norman poor go Norman. through all that, he gave his whole heart and soul into that letter and his hey, lower intestines. <laughs> And I love how Rita's just like so excited to be eating all these like super hot mole sauces. I mean, I even wrote it right. I wrote it down right here in my notes. Get this man some milk. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everybody knows to temper the heat on your tongue and the spice to drink milk. <laughs> At least I thought that was common knowledge. You know? <laughs> but nobody's doing it. Get this man some milk. I oh. never, I don't even eat chili without a glass of milk nearby. You know, so <laughs> just like get this man some milk. He probably ran out too fast before they can give him some milk. <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> poor, oh, Norman. poor Norman oh sacrificing everything uh, <laughs> sacrificing the contents of his stomach that's for sure there's another dark of night award <laughs> oh now that does deserve a dark of night award putting himself in physical harm <laughs> yeah can you just see grandpa Norman oh kids I got this dark of night award <laughs> Because Back in the year I 2015, I had to eat 27 hot chili peppers. And I got diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> I got the Dark of Night Award because I got diarrhea. <laughs> oh, oh, we need to we we need to tell Jeff that one so he thinks. <laughs> Grandpa oh, Norman. <laughs> Grandpa Norman. Now that Hashtag would be Grandpa fun. Norman. <laughs> Hashtag movie 70. I yeah. know. <laughs> let's get them. Let, yeah, let's let's get Shalliver married off first. Before we get them married off first, let's get them to uh, together. <laughs> Speaking of Shalliver. Speaking yeah. of Shalliver. So okay. when Shane decides to send Oliver off camping, he's very concerned about their date. And you got to feel a little sorry for him because it's almost like a, are you trying to get rid of me? Mm -hmm. But yeah. Shane comforts, like she reassures him that she is not going to return to Montaldo's without him. And with that word, I think all of her fears were gone. Mm -hmm. yeah, when, when, when she said, mm -hmm. I'm not going back to Montaldo's without you. Mm -hmm. Fear gone. Yeah. Bye. I'm leaving. You're right. Well, and he, all, like, he does call her Shane. Oh, he calls mm -hmm. her Shane. She loves that. Yes, she, <laughs> she, her, she's got, she's got those eyes going. <laughs> <gasps> oh. <laughs> okay, so jumping to the end of the movie, the scene that everybody, most everybody that I know loves, the chapel scene. Um, so first of all, this is my favorite Shalliver scene ever because it's the one scene that gives all the emotions for me. It hits every single one. 
And like, I just like start crying like a baby. <laughs> Candy's already starting. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. But okay. before, before we get too deep, I have one comment about the scene and then you guys can gosh all you want about the shawl over moment. I have one comment. Okay. <laughs> My thing that I always like, the first thing I noticed about this scene, I make this point every time I talk about this scene is the fact that, so when Oliver is like with his dad and comes out, he meets Dale in the hallway, Mm -hmm. but Shane is in the chapel, right? And I just think that's such a beautiful commentary by Martha that Shane's first reaction was to go to God in gratitude instead of like reassuring herself by seeing Oliver kind of like Dale did. Mm -hmm. And like, that was a really like beautiful, like way of like reminding us to like seek God for gratitude. Like the things he gives us and things like that. Oh, that is, that's good. Or, or is that the place that Shane knew Oliver would come? Maybe. But she said she was just so grateful. She does. True. True. She does. I mean, she also knows Oliver. And (laughs) that had to be. Well, so does Dale. She was not in the job. Well, but she was on the way. You know, he didn't turn he didn't turn around and go back the other way. He kept walking. So that was I mean, both of them have to know that the first place he's gonna go once he leaves dad's room mm-hmm. is the chapel. No, so Jesse, make a good point. I, I, I actually I think I, I tend to agree with you on that because she does say that she was so grateful and it is a good tie in because Martha never does anything willy nilly. Like everything no. has a meaning. Yeah. Um and Shane easily could have convinced as she was on the debate team in high school. She could have convinced <laughs> those nurses or yeah. the doctors to let her stand outside the emergency room where all where where joe Mm -hmm. was um and she i mean there are lots of things she could have just walked in there there are a lot of places where she could have gone to be closer to oliver instead Mm of the chapel i mean for me by nature not you know i am a christian and so i do believe in god and stuff but if something like where that if something like that were to happen my inclination probably wouldn't be to go to the chapel at a hospital it would be right. to go to my loved one you know right you want to see them and like have that yeah you want to right but right. i think it's because in this episode she finally trusted god for herself mm-hmm. and then um so it was like her first instinct was to go mm-hmm. back to him which yeah. i think is really beautiful that martha does that yeah so. yeah so speaking of Oliver, so Oliver asked Dale, where is Shane? Do you think that Oliver knew that Shane was going to be in the chapel? No. Because he even says, yeah, he makes the I did not expect to see you here. So well, this is the last place. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and I love when he walks in, he walks in just normally and he like dead stops. <laughs> as soon as he sees Shane and it's almost like a am I see like am I delirious now you know that moment where he needs some water am I hallucinating <laughs> am I hallucinating have I spent too much time in the Rocky Mountains <sighs> that mountain air is getting to me <laughs> <laughs> but I love how he walks towards her and he she see they both they see each other and Shane is like sobbing as we all are at this point did you guys expect her to jump up and throw her arms around him because I did I expected more of a reaction yeah she I I didn't because I just I don't know with how emotional Shane is Mm -hmm. and you know her inclination when things were falling apart with, uh, with, when things were falling apart with Holly, when things were falling mm-hmm. apart with his dad, is to be close to him mm-hmm. and to, you remember, I just want to throw my arms around you mm-hmm. and tell you everything's going to be okay, but I know it's not what you want since when has that stopped you? Mm-hmm. Boom. You know, so I just, I didn't. I, I mean, I'm not disappointed with how mm-hmm. the scene turned out. I'm not disappointed that she didn't. I just thought that, I, I thought that maybe she might have. See, I, I don't know if I would have seen that because that the chapel is such a sacred place. No, I'm not talking about yeah. this loud jumping up and no, down, no. but just he sits down and just, 
oh, you know, that kind of thing. But they're also not at that, they're not at that comfort level yet with each other. That's very true. But, Uh, you know, like she had, had, but she had to ask permission for her to hug Oliver, you know, and like that that other time, that other time. And then all these other times have been a messed up date, interruption after interruption, the most touching they've ever done with them. (laughs) Right, right. And even the dancing, you know, this. It, it, within the movies they're they're still very stiff when I mean, they're very moving. formal very formal like they're not at that level of you know yeah the one time when they broke the formality was in the vault yes and mm-hmm. and he was comforting her and hugging mm-hmm. her so yeah i guess but see i kind of view i kind of view this even though even though oliver wasn't really in any danger because mm-hmm he's fine Mm -hmm. and he's not he's not gonna die from starvation after one night Um, but uh but uh this still you know she thought that maybe something was wrong with him right and uh and so just like they thought they were gonna die in the vault she thought that he was gonna die up there on that mountain and so i i thought maybe maybe she might have reacted a little bit more strongly to his Mm -hmm. presence. But like I said, I'm not the least of it disappointed by the scene. It was just, it was just a thought I had. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and as, so as they're talking and Shane is crying, like I said, as we all are crying, at least Kemi and I are crying. (laughs) Um, I I may have the first time. I I don't think I have since. (laughs) It's okay. It's okay. It's okay if you have since, too. (laughs) (laughs) That's definitely okay. (laughs) Anyways, this this scene, this is the first, one of the very first times we see Oliver completely release everything. You know, all of that formality, all of that guilt. And if you notice, too, going back to Shandell's wardrobe theory, Oliver is in, he's not in a suit. Nope. And the suit is his armor, as she puts it. Yeah. He is not in a suit. He is just in plain clothes, jeans, a button up that was like unbuttoned down to like, (laughs) I don't know if you noticed, but it was like really unbuttoned. He was very disheveled for Oliver. Unshaven. Unshaven. Missed his morning ablution. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Oliver. Must never forsake those morning ablutions. Right. Even if you're in the mountains. <laughs> Must find clean water to shave. But <laughs> it's an interesting, it's an interesting parallel between him letting his guard down and telling Shane that he did leave his trouble he left his troubles behind on the mountains and that he was going to you know make them a, a more than a thing. And that um every woman that he's ever cared about has broken his heart i mean you don't just tell that to your best friend you know what i'm saying i wrote i wrote it down right here every woman in my life and he's saying every word so deliberately yeah. mm-hmm. it was that, such emotion uh, uh-huh. yeah he was on the brink of tears and oliver is hardly ever on the brink of tears mm-hmm. and so every woman in my life who truly mattered has broken my heart. No. I know that breaks my heart. <laughs> oh man, I remember the first time I watched that, I was just like crying. I'm just like, Oliver, you're right. Every woman has broken your heart. Like your mom and your wife. Dang. Well, man. I well, I notice who truly mattered. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like his second grade teacher broke his heart <laughs> or anything like that. Right. But- right she didn't truly matter right (sighs) that also shows that dale doesn't truly matter in that high of an Mm -hmm. emotional sense because she's never broken his heart that's That's true person (laughs) yeah but that just that shows where where oliver has that that shows where she is Mm -hmm. in an oliver level Mm mm-hmm yeah anyways 
super beautiful. And then the other quote I have here that I wrote down, I have it on my blog, um, 25 reasons you should watch Sign Still Delivered. Um, a little plug there. <laughs> Here's what I wrote. This scene in Lost Without You gave me all the feels. I mean, the vulnerability in Shane and Oliver's growth as individuals and as a couple had me sobbing. Yes, I cry a lot watching this show, but it's all good tears, I promise. Billy Joel's song, And So It Goes, in this scene is absolute perfection for these two characters. And here are the two lines that are so simple yet so powerful. Shane says, you would be surprised what I'm starting to believe. And Oliver says, thank you for saving my life. And out of context, it sounds so basic, right? Like, it, yeah. it sounds pretty cliche and so basic. But just knowing what they've been through, knowing the situations, knowing everything, it, and knowing Oliver's backstory, I mean, thank you for saving my life. And not just on the mountain and making the call, but, like, saving his life from a life of misery. And I don't know. I don't want to say Solitude. Oliver, yeah, and I don't know that Oliver was completely miserable, but he wasn't completely 100% joyfully happy either. He no, wasn't he living was alone. his best life. Yeah, he was, he was alone. alone. He was stoic. Shane really brought something out in him that he hadn't seen before. And mm -hmm. they made each other better people for it. And I just, I love that line. I love how Martha just writes these lines in such a way that it has a double meaning. So... Can we talk about what he left with her on her hand? We sure can. Oh, we need some fans in here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Once again, out of context, big deal. He kissed her hand. But in context, I mean... I don't even know what to compare this to <laughs> on an Oliver level. It's, it's huge. It's huge because this is not a gentleman taking a lady's hand. I, don't, I wouldn't expect Oliver to do that because even though he's into formalities, that's, that's just something that was done in another time. Yeah. It's like yeah. the gesture itself has a formality about it, but there's nothing formal about the way he does it right right so but yeah that was not that was not a gentleman taking a lady's hand and kissing it hello that was <laughs> that was a lifeline that was a drink of water who for a man who has walked through a desert you know <laughs> it was very sacred it was it was very sacred i i mean it was almost like a vow of sorts being in the chapel Mm -hmm. I mean, it would yeah. be really, uh, to be honest with you, it would be really weird if they had their first real kiss in the chapel. That would be weird. <laughs> after having gone through all this trauma, after have, Shane has found God and Oliver is there and their faiths are now connecting and then they're going to like have this romantic kiss in the chapel. It doesn't make sense. You're but right. everything else, like him taking her hand and, and it's not just like a gentle take either. It's like he takes her hand like... It is a vow. Well, and she's got she's got her hand on his face, and then he takes it from his face yeah. and kisses it. It's so connected and it so is. deep and so emotional. I, I mean, mean this is this is the kind of kiss. This is the kind of kiss that you can watch it happen, look down, look back up, and it's still happening. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> he doesn't just peck her hand either. He kisses uh -uh. her hand. I mean, wow. <laughs> wow. It, it says something. It does. It does. It brings their yeah. relationship so much deeper and it sets them up for the next movie. And it's just, there's so much packed in there. And then also too, after the kiss of the hand, she leans her head on his shoulder and he looks at her like he's thinking about kissing her, but he knows that's not the right time yet. And then he like leans his head on her too. <laughs> if they had been in a more advanced relationship, not necessarily higher ground level when he actually kisses her, but if they had been in a slightly more advanced relationship than they were, I would have liked to see a kiss on the forehead. It was not the time right there, 
Mm -hmm. but you know when he's kind of leaning into her Mm -hmm. that would have been a really great time for a kiss on the forehead if they had been a little bit further yeah yeah Yeah. too bad they weren't (laughs) it's okay it sets us up for the next movie but i also love the pan out the final scene of them and just the Mm -hmm. two of them in the chapel with the lights coming through it's just oh it's so beautiful you guys this is my favorite scene this is my favorite shawl over scene ever (laughs) do you guys find it interesting that the scene in the chapel has billy joel and the scene in the car and the mountains has hallelujah Mm. that you know it's not necessarily that they should switch because billy joel would not have fit there Mm -hmm. right but they both made sense where they were yeah absolutely But isn't it interesting Mm -hmm. that the sacred music, what we see as sacred music, is not in the chapel, but the scene does not seem any less sacred. Right. That's really interesting to me now. And (laughs) I I think when you read the lyrics of And So It Goes, it's a reflection Mm -hmm. of Oliver really moving past. Yeah, he's moving past his hurt in that song, and so it goes, is about someone being hurt. Right. I, I only Arthur, felt the thorns. All of right. us only felt heartbreak. Yeah, it's like, yeah. It's, like it's about him. <laughs> in every heart, there is a room, a sanctuary, safe and strong to heal the wounds of, well, from right lovers there. past right there. until sanctuary. a new one comes along. Sanctuary, right mm-hmm. there. That, mm-hmm. that alone makes it fit the chapel right there. Right. And... I don't, I honestly think, because again, Martha, and I think I saw, I might've seen this on Chandel's blog, but every, 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 every little detail in Signed, Sealed, Delivered has some kind of meaning. Yeah. Every, like Martha is, she's got 90 minutes to produce a movie. I mean, she's going to pack as much in. And this song, and so it goes, it's, it was their song that they danced to in the masterpiece that they couldn't do the recital because Oliver is a stand-up guy and he has to stick to his beliefs and you know he can't dance with another with another woman on his anniversary (laughs) with Holly and that's and so it goes and then we're closing this loop with Oliver and Shane of okay to go forward yes exactly choosing full circle it's a full circle moment and it's like the song it's a bookend for that (laughs) chapter of their relationship um you draw a circle and then you move it forward you know? <laughs> right yeah but i i will be surprised if i will be surprised if we see this again this song because it's a bookend oh. no that's that's true but it, i think it could be a very good bookend as their first dance oh i don't know i guess we'll see i guess we'll see <laughs> <laughs> i mean is there any other song that could fit them as well to be their first dance for their reception? I mean, the song has a lot of meaning for them, but right, ly- lyrically, it, no, it, ly- it no lyrically, it doesn't make sense, but mm-hmm. it's almost their song, you know? I think it, I think it could be. I think it could be oh. their mm-hmm. first dance. Postables, let us know what you think. What is their first song going to be? Yeah, Postables, let us know if you think that And So It Goes by Billy Joel will be the first dance. Or if you don't think that, let us know what you think their first dance song will be. All righty. So, Postables, we have something fun for you. Just take it away. All right. So, as we've talked about, Lost Without You is one of my top five of the SSD movies because of the great spiritual elements in it. And so I've taken one of my favorite quotes from the lovely tale and created a little quote painting, if you can see it. And I'm doing a giveaway for it. So this could be yours Um, to enter. All you have to do is comment on either the Twitter or the Instagram post about this episode and then um, paste a copy of that comment into the raffle copter uh, link that we will post along with the episode. Um, and just because of postage and shipping and all that, it's only open to residents of the U.S. So I'm sorry, international postables. I still love you. 
I just want to say this is how I met Jess. That's true. Yes. Oh, Jess, yes. Yeah. Jess and I met because I entered. I didn't even remember that I had <laughs> entered, <laughs> which is so sad. But I entered her contest to have a painting given to me. And it was her painting, Trust the Timing. Which also has, from this episode? Also from this episode. And it has been so incredibly helpful through the happenings in my life in the last few years. But yeah, that's how Jess and I met. So maybe she'll become a great friend of yours too. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Be friends with me. Take my painting. <laughs> <laughs> and for those who are listening on audio, the painting is I Pray to Change Me. Oh, and yes. Thank you. I forgot about that. Yeah, no problem. You can um, go check it out on Instagram and Twitter as we will have a photo of it there. So you can see that. And um, did we, uh, we did not talk about your other little fun thing. Little th oh yeah, I have a little show and tell today apparently. So when I last, I think it was last year, time is irrelevant now. Yes, it but, was last October. Uh, last November. November. Last November, I got to meet some of the postables in person for the first time in Florida. And one of the postables, I'm very sorry, I do not remember who gave these out, but they gave out these little cute Christmas decorations, but it's a dog putting a letter in a mailbox and they got it because it reminded them of Sandy and the, the big mailbox from this episode. So it made me think of uh, this episode. It's very cute. Aww. Super fun. All right. Are you guys ready for some trivia? No. I am ready. <laughs> All righty. Number one. Who used more than 6,000 ships to deliver mail during the Mongol Empire? Kublai Khan. That is correct. Eleanor went as who for Halloween? Say that again. <gasps> who did Eleanor go as for Halloween? Something delivering mail. Yes. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> this historical person delivered mail to Paris, ironically enough. I'm stumped. His baby was kidnapped. Oh, Lindbergh? Yes, that is correct. <laughs> who found Topper's mail, or sorry, who found Topper's letter in the mailbox? What's the name of the guy? Oh, he works in the props department. Yeah, I for his name. Um, oh, shoot. Hold, hold on. Did I write it down by some chance? Um. Just start throwing out dude names. Kyle. Darren. Don. Mark. <laughs> Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I oh my gosh, <laughs> really? I mean, this is a very spiritual, spiritual episode. episode. <laughs> so. But those are all incorrect. His name was Bobby. <laughs> Always go with Bob. If they ever ask you a name of a guy, just say Bob. Bob. Robert. Dated a guy Bobby. named Bob. <laughs> All right. What did the t-shirt say? Assume nothing. nothing. Yes, that is correct. All right. Norman said he takes the letter out of the DLO. And he says, I haven't read it in compliance with postal privacy code what? 10-1-P. Yes. <laughs> I knew I wrote it down. I couldn't find it. And one last question. What is Eleanor's last name? Stumping oh. us, Casey. Oh my gosh, this never happens to me. I well, it never always do... happens to me. I never, <laughs> do this... I never do this poorly. This is sad. Welcome to my world. Oh my <laughs> How does it feel? <laughs> it's Van it. Teasdale. <laughs> All righty, y'all. Next week, we have another top requested guests coming on and you probably already saw it if you saw uh, my tweet on twitter but she spilled the beans i did very subtly too i said zach's <laughs> gonna come back and he is he's gonna be come on here. <laughs> Yay. so that's the first part of the good news the second part of the good news is we talked to him forever so it's a two-parter yay Woo! 
Yay! So nice. We did it twice. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, anything else you lovely ladies want to say? Trust the timing. Right. Trust the timing. And enter our giveaway. All right. You can, you can be my friend then. <laughs> <laughs> like you. <Huey. laughs> Yay. All right, y'all. Let us know what you thought about this episode. And we will see you next week. Back with Zach. <laughs> Yay. Bye. 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 Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Deliver Me a Podcast. If you want to know what's going to happen next week, be sure you are following us on Twitter at Deliver Me a Pod and on Instagram at Deliver Me a Podcast. We also have a merch store where you can buy tons of post things for you and your friends. We'll see you next week. <laughs>